So we looked at how to connect a button and we actually addressed one of the inherent problems of a button by connecting the pin to the button and connecting that pin to ground. I never went over the schematic for that, so I could do that very quickly before we start talking about debouncing. But essentially we have the Arduino We have pin two, and we have five volt, and we have ground. Pin two goes through a 10K resistor, and that will constantly pull pin two to ground or keep it low. And then otherwise, we have a button here. When this button is pressed, the voltage will wanna go through here. And instead of going through this resistance, it'll actually go through here and connect to the five volt. Make sense? And that's how we don't have an open pin. Now, what is debouncing? Well, debouncing actually occurs because of mechanical and physical limitations with buttons. And I'm gonna show you how that's affected in a circuit. So what's all this talk about debouncing? Well, debouncing, is one of the limiting factors of a button, one of the issues around having a button. The problem is mechanically and electrically, when you press a button, the Arduino is so fast that it can actually sense when those two metal contacts get close together and it can actually jump back and forth. So you might actually, by pressing the button once, read 20 button presses. And I can actually demonstrate that. I'm gonna go here and upload example, digital debounce. And before we look at the code, I am going to upload it. And I'm gonna make one quick change here. And you'll see what this is. There's a debounce delay and I'm gonna change this to zero and upload that version of it. Now watch what happens when I press this button. If I press it very, very slowly, I can actually get it. Did you see it flicker? can actually get it to flicker. I'll try that again. Hopefully it picks up on the camera. But I'm pressing the button very slowly. There it is, there's some flickering, right? And that's because, again, this is a mechanical connection and just as the plates come together to make that connection, you can have some arcing and electrons flowing. And to, do, to eliminate this problem, we do what's called a debounce. And what debouncing does is it keeps track of time and it reads the button over this period of time and references how many times it's been pressed and how long of a period of time. And if the period of time is not long enough, it says, I'm not gonna listen to it. So it's basically saying, I'm listening, and then it says, I'm not gonna listen for a minute, then I'll listen. And that's the amount of debounce time. In the code, there's actually a delay debounce in here. And if I change that back to 50 and upload it, and I press this button, See if I can get it to do it again. I can get it a little bit. You might have seen a flicker. It's a little hard to see. It's a, it's a tough one to demo. But think about when you have a prototype and you're controlling something. I mean, something like a saw. When I press that button, I, I only want it to press once. And more importantly, when you're running prototypes, say a saw to turn it off or something like that, what happens when I press it that one time and it says turn off and then back on, right? That could be very problematic. So. Let's change the delay to 100 milliseconds and upload that. And let's see if I can get that button to flash. Do this little funny thing. I'm pressing it really slow. And you can see it's really, I can't get it to flicker anymore. Every time I press it, it's gonna reliably turn on and off. Now that's not to be said if you are creating something like a saw. You should rely on debouncing for safety features. You absolutely should not. There's many other things that should be thought about when it comes to safety and electronics. You should always have redundancies and some things should be redundant in code, some things should be redundant in hardware. But this is just one strategy for getting the proper reading of a button. We can look through the code very quickly. Now we can look at the setup. Remember void setup with the curly braces, beginning and ending. Pin mode, input, the button pin, which we know is pin two, and the LED pin output, which is 13. 
and the initial LED state. Digitally write LED pin, the initial state, which is defined up here as high. Then there's the void loop, which runs over and over and over. And essentially what this does is it reads the initial state of the button over and over. But while it's reading that state, it says, I've read the button, has enough time passed for me to read the button again. If not, let's ignore that input and stay at the current state. If enough time has passed, let's change that input state. Again, it's very well commented. So go through the code, take a look at it, change a few things around, especially changing that debounce delay time and see how that affects your circuit. So that's a general overview of what debouncing is and a great software solution to fixing this problem when working with buttons.